Hi, everybody. Happy uh, Thursday. Oh, my gosh. This has gone really fast um, these three days. I'm excited to be back with you for our part three of three uh, workshop or three session workshop. Really excited to see everybody here again today. So uh, welcome, welcome. Um, if you don't know me or if you haven't been uh, to our last seminars or our last, I should say, live sessions, uh, my name is Sonny Grint and I am thrilled to be here with you again. And um, I really, hi, Fra, hi, Giddy, hi, everybody. Good to see you. Um, really, again, thrilled uh, to be here for these couple sessions. Um, I've got a few announcements um, that I want to make before we get going too far. But remember today, what we're going to do is we are going to talk a little bit. Um, and again, remember, this is called Just Beyond. So just a little bit about digitizing, um, kind of the differences. Some, some of you may have, um, I keep... Sorry, Anne, I see you from Denver, North Carolina, and I keep thinking Denver, Colorado. I'm sure you get that a lot. So hi, everybody from everywhere. We've got Iowa, Virginia, Richmond, Louisville. Um, really great to see everybody. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about those of you with the gold uh, MySonet software and those with the platinum you both have digitizing capabilities. The gold is actually um, really, it's all about automatic digitizing. And I wanna share with you kind of the differences. So if there is something that you're wanting to create in digitizing really to um, you know, know that sometimes you're, you know, you're limited here, what can you do if you go on beyond that? So. Um, that's what we're going to be doing today. But before I get started with that, again, I got quite a few different um, announcements to make. One, I want to remind you that our next Facebook Live after we get done today is actually going to be on October 12th. So take a little note, write down October 12th. Mickey Hudson is going to be joining you at 2 central time, so 2 p.m. central time, and she's going to be talking about the just basically my son at 101, kind of going through a few things, making sure everybody's level set so you're getting the most out of my sonnet. So um, make sure to join her uh, again on October 12th. Um, we are going to, Meredith is here again, by the way. So Meredith is helping me. So um, she's here and she came up with a little survey. We wanna know if you like this format that we're doing. So at the end of the session, we're gonna put out a little survey and we would really appreciate it if you go ahead, fill that out for us. It'll help us to know, you know, should, you know, what we're doing well, what we need to change, that sort of thing. So that's gonna be happening as well. And then something that's actually pretty cool, um, first time we're doing this, we're actually doing a MySonet contest. And Meredith is going to pin the information about the contest in the chat. So in the information here, she, wow, you're on top of things, Meredith. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to do a little contest, and it basically is a um, make an embroidery. And you have your put in a drawing to win a uh, one of our beautiful embroidery machines and a one year subscription to my Sonet. If you already have an embroidery machine and my Sonet, guess what? What a great gift for someone for the holidays, right? So this is actually pretty cool. It's just create a design in my Sonet. There are a few rules, so those there's a link to that, but. Anyway, so have some fun with this. I think it should be a lot of fun uh, to work with. So um, we got Puerto Rico in the house, so that's great. Lots of uh, people showing up. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make sure I, I mentioned all three of those things. I'll, I'll mention them again at the end, all right? So I'll mention them again at the end. Um, and I think those were all of my announcements. I look at all my notes here. So um, I think that's it. So 
we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, talking a little bit about, you know, uh, just some basics in digitizing. Um, and there, so, Marianne, I will tell you, with when you're talking about the gold subscription, actually the gold is only in the boxed version, okay? So the gold is only in the boxed version or the perpetual. You would go talk to one of the um, MySonet dealers about the gold version. Uh, there is no subscription for gold. It goes from silver to platinum. So just kind of be aware, but you can talk with your, your local uh, MySonet dealer for that information. So, all right. Before, I keep saying before, I, um, I have to smile a little bit because my sister and I, we usually talk on the weekends and uh, I can never hang up we always like, oh, just one more thing. Oh, just one more thing. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm doing that to you all today. So I kind of apologize um, for that a little bit. I wanted to call your attention. Some of you may recognize this little passport cover. This was our digitizing uh, workshop from last year. We did this one other time. It was a little bit more in depth on digitizing. This is still up on the MySonet uh, um, Facebook page, and it's also on our YouTube page. So if you want a little bit more in depth than what we're going to do this next little bit, okay, this is a great class to look up, okay? So a great class to look up. So please, um, it's, it's a fun thing to do. We talked a lot about the real, like, in-depth basics of digitizing. So please um, check out that class if you want. And Debbie and a couple people that were on that class, I see Wanda as well. So if you if you want a little bit more in depth, check out that class. It's a really um, gives you a lot of information. Okay, so it gives you a lot of information. So today with the MySonet um, software, we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between Express Design Wizard, okay, so the Express Design Wizard, and then getting into digitizing and what kind of, what the differences are and why, if you want to get into digitizing, why you might want to look into like the Platinum, a little bit more version, you know, it has a little bit more. Some people, they're very happy with the um, express design and doing, you know, just using what you automatically make. It's It really is up to you, okay? So it really is up to you. Let's go ahead, Meredith, and today, I almost, let's, this is what I'm going to kind of start to work on today. One is upside down. Um <laughs> It never fails. I'm going to go backwards. We're going to start by making this little heart. And we're going to make this little heart in three different ways. All right. So in three different ways. The thing with this little heart is it can be done in the Express Design Wizard. It can be done in the Express Design Wizard that is basically the wizard. You can take it through Express Design and digitizing. And then you can use quick design. So we're going to actually do three different ways. And the interesting thing about the three different ways, although it's the same software, they come out differently. So that's what I want to kind of express to you. Once you get this little heart made, once you get that made, you can make changes to do outlines, to do gradient fills. And I'm going to turn that around to do a multi uh, wave fill. So there are lots of cool things you can do. Once you have that original, and it's called an EDO file, that you really don't have to know what that means. It's called, um, I believe it's called embroidery design object. So EDO, don't worry about what it is. It's just the file you wanna save so you can make adjustments and make changes. And it's really, really cool. So. That's what we're going to start with. But I do want to share one other little design because I know 
How many of you out there are actually quilters as well as embroiderers? Are there a few out there looking for yeses or hands or that sort of thing? I, I will often tell people I am not a quilter. Um, however, when they come over to my home, there are quilts all over that I've made. So I guess that makes me a quilter. But what I really love, I am, yep, both, yep, I, I get it. It's really kind of fun. One of the things that I like to do is you guys saw this on, it was Tuesday. But what I want to share with you is, did you all notice this little um, Ohio Star little design? This design actually was one that I created to go with an Ohio Star des, um, quilt that I made. So it was kind of fun. And check that out. I just want you to look real closely. Look at how the fill patterns in our um, embroidery software, how they kind of even look like. They look like quilting, right? So these are really, really fun. You can make your, like I said, I made this to go with an Ohio Star wall hanging quilt that I made. What a fun way to really make your quilts special. So I think that's really neat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the software for just a moment here. And when I come to the software, I do, I'm gonna start with a blank canvas just so we can kind of level set a little bit, everybody. So I just kind of a little bit uh, to level set. So we're starting in the same place when you're looking at this. Then what I'll do is I'm going to go to the create tab. And I had mentioned earlier, I'm not going to jump into digitizing right away. What I am going to do is I want to use the express design wizard. And this time I'm going to express design into a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to express design into a rectangle. And I'm just going to kind of make this rectangle just about that, about that big. Hi, everybody. Again, I see more people are coming in. So that's wonderful. Then I want to use the Create Express Embroidery and click Next. I love the wizards and the, one of the reasons why I love the wizards is they really just take me step by step through everything. So the first thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna load a picture. And here is the little heart that we used earlier. So that you saw, I guess I should say you saw and I'm gonna click okay. So there's my little heart and I'm going to click next. Can I just choose the whole thing? Click next. This time you'll notice the design size here is 107. So it's 107 millimeters. It's basically, I think you all know this, but when you hover, it'll tell you this is 4.21 inches. So it tells you in inches how big this is. So um, that's fine. That's a good size. And I'm going to click next. This is a two color design, right? So, and something that's really important you realize everyone when you look at this and you're going through the wizard, you always need to account for the background as a color as well as everything else. So if for some, you know, if this heart was colored in, or excuse me, heart, this star was colored in in blue, I would have blue, white as the background and the black. So you always have to account for that background color no matter what. So that's why two colors here. It says, notice on, on this, and I don't know if you've ever played around with this, remove main background um, color only or remove all background color areas. If I take the remove all background color areas, notice that right here, all of my fill pattern for the heart went away. So I do not want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna just remove the background only. Click next. And basically at this point, 
you have stitches. So at this point, I'll make this just a little bit bigger, maybe here. There we go. So we have stitches here. I want to make sure, <laughs> I want to make sure everybody that you realize that in our wizards, so in the Express Design Wizard, in the gold and in the platinum, both of them, this fabric advisor, everyone, the fabric advisor is active. Some of you, I don't know if any of you go back to some of our way older, older softwares, meaning going back to 4D and even 3D or any of those older versions of software. The fabric advisor didn't always make changes. Here today in our latest versions in my Sonet here, the fabric advisor, meaning what fabric you choose, will change the number of stitches that you have in your design. Want to make sure that you guys realize that. So for woven, keep an eye out on this for me. It says 11,458. Okay, so 11,458 stitches. If I change to fleece, now remember way, way back on Tuesday when we were talking about fleece and uh, compensation, different things like that. When I choose this as fleece and refresh preview, it is, notice it put in more stitches and it made my stitch wider because of compensation for the fleece. This is really a beautiful thing in the wizards here, guys, in that if you know that you're going to stitch out on a knit or a terry cloth, or in my case, I did stitch out on a woven, make sure you choose that in the fabric advisor because that will make your design more ready. I say more ready, but it will make it ready for uh, whatever you're, the fabric you're using. So it's really important you do that. And then let's click finish. And in that very short amount of time, let's change this little color here to a pink. I have made a heart. And again, it is running through the Express Design Wizard, okay? So running through the Express Design Wizard in the gold level. And at this point, your design is done. It is certainly adequate. It looks just fine. However, it is going to be a more basic, a more flat. Notice it's a, it's a more flat um, fill pattern versus, if I come back to this, and I know I'm down in the corner, but if I do that, can you all see this fill pattern I chose was a heart, right? So it's a very special, one of those specialty fill patterns. So you can see it's kind of cool. That is done in the platinum. So like I said, very adequate, got a nice little design. But if you want to do more, let me show you the next step. All right. So let me show you the next step. All right, so let's come back to the file. I'm going to grab a new window. And it always takes a moment. You all who were here yesterday, you, you know that yesterday for a moment I had to send us all away because my, my computer was uh, feeling, the, feeling the heat here in Tennessee. Um, I'm going to, I chose a new window. Let's choose blank canvas again. This is a perfect hoop size for this, the 150 by 150 hoop. I, uh, I don't know for sure if any of you have that hoop. It is actually one of my favorites because it's just a really great size. It's square. It works really well, that 150 by 150 hoop. So now we're going to go back to create. This time, everybody, this is where the difference between gold or for those of you who are in Premiere Plus 2 or some of the older softwares, the extra, and then going up into the platinum, this is where you start to see one of the big differences. All right. So I'm going to click on digitizing. 
And when I click on digitizing, this really is opening a whole new module or a whole new program for us. You'll see that the wizard that I chose, this time I did choose a window. I am going to do the express embroidery again. Load that picture. Still choose my little heart here and click next. Next again. This time we are going to, instead of doing a rectangle, I'm going to enter a design size. And y'all remember with me the size, it was 107. So I can try and keep this even so we can see our, and actually I probably should have the height as 107 and then click next. It's a little bit taller, right? So that's why I'm gonna do that. Still need to make sure if I remove all the background areas, I don't wanna do that because I, I want a fill pattern in there. So I'm gonna leave that fill pattern, same colors. Still gonna use woven here. I must've made it a little bit smaller. I must've, should have stuck with the width, but I didn't. Notice it's 8,000 stitches, 8,800 stitches versus the 11. That's okay. You'll, you'll see what, what happens here in just a moment. Uh, you know, I just stopped in my tracks there just a moment. You could see me, right? You could see my brain working there for just a minute. It won't take me but a minute. Let's go ahead. Enter design size width. Let's do 107. All right. And enter that. I want to make sure we're, uh, we're, you're seeing about the same things. There we go. That, that looks more familiar, right? That was a closer number to what we had before. And now I'm going to click finish. All right. We are now in digitizing, guys. We're now in digitizing. Oh, did I set? Well, Karen, sorry. I, you know what? We can make that change in a minute. It came, It seemed to. I thought I set 107, but I guess I didn't. So we'll make that change in a minute. Um, I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to hide my background image so I don't get too confused here. And we're going to change the color. And this time instead of pink, so I can, uh, I'm going to change it to more of a an gold or orange color. So I can keep track. Remember the first one that we had was pink. <laughs> I tend to do things more than one time. So I, I probably did it a couple different times. Um, this is more of a goldish color, right? So the other one was pink, so we can remember what was just the wizard. In digitizing, one of the interesting things I can do is I actually can highlight the different pattern fills. Can you see that? This is the pattern fill. Look over on your film strip here. The pattern fill of the heart. This is one of those great changes I can do. I can come in here with this pattern fill and I can simply delete that. And now I got rid of that pattern fill of just, of just the little star in here. I couldn't do that, right? I could not do that when in the, in the previous software, right? I couldn't do that in the gold software. I had to be able to do this in digitizing. That is one of the big differences between, you know, just using the wizard and being able to go into the digitizing program and make adjustments. Something else that I want you to notice, look at all, this will make more sense here in a little bit, okay? More sense here in a little bit. But here we go, as I go up and down here, notice all of these different pieces. Do you all see all those different pieces? Each one of those, when I click on it, I'm just clicking along here. These are all separate parts of the, 
Uh oh, Leanna Meredith, I don't know. Is my is my video blurry right now, or is it? Could it be something else? Because I I don't see it as being blurry. Are we doing okay with that? Uh, Meredith is saying, Leanna, it might just be uh, something going on with your um, internet right now because I think we're we're still okay here. So, um, all right. So, what I want you to notice is all of the different pieces here that make up that outline of our heart and star. Okay. Okay, so for the heart and star. So with all of these pieces, they're all set up over here. I can come in here now and I can highlight just this little bitty satin line here and delete that. And then delete that little straight stitch to get rid of, I'm going to come all the way over to this side to get rid of those pieces that uh, make this look a little bit funny. It doesn't look as, so it will look nicer this way. So if I come back into here, I'm always going to have those little pieces. Remember, this was from just the express design, and that is in the gold. And so those pieces you can delete when you are working in the digitizing program and you don't have to worry about that, right? So um, big difference, right? So big difference. You, you have the basic express design that allows you to get a result, whereas in, once you get into digitizing, you can take things away, you can make adjustments. And, and I see, um, I think it was, Julie, you had a question all, all about the gold or that sort of thing. Um, basically, what I want you to notice is now I've got the pattern fill here, I can do a right click I can change into hearts, I can change into squares, I can change into all of these different things. And I'm going to test you all of your knowledge right now. So I'm gonna test all of your knowledge. I'm gonna ask you the difference between okay and apply on this little area. Do you all know that difference? That difference is if I apply it, doesn't close the window. So guess what I can do? I can look and see, do I like that pattern? Or do I want this pattern? Or do I want this pattern? That's what that apply allows you to do versus once I click OK, it closes the window. So if I want to make changes, I have to keep going back and forth and keep opening that window. So that's kind of a cool thing, right? Yeah, apply as a preview. That is exactly right. So it lets you see what's going on. And then the O is your origin. So I move my hearts around and then the little handle. I know many of you know this, but I, I still think it's kind of fun. The little handle allows you to change the direction of your uh, pattern in there as well. All right. So I can't get it. There we go. That's fairly straight right there. So Glenda, you're right. Apply is more like a preview. You can see without having to shut things down. So pretty interesting. Can you all... Hopefully, so hopefully you all are able to see that basically the difference between just doing your um, express design that allows you to get a result and then express design that allows you to get into um, the digitizing and make adjustments. 
So there really is a difference between those two features. Okay, so those two features. Now, I want to go back and um, so the question about the, it is true that the gold version, um, so in the MySonet software, there's the silver there and silver is available in both subscription and in a boxed version. Then there's gold that is only available in the box version. And then you have the platinum that is both in box and in uh, subscription. You are there. There are a couple differences, but the box software does not. So none of the box software does include the library. So that's why I think a lot of you like the subscription is to really um, kind of it's it's that way you get the library as well. So just do realize that there in the box, there is silver, gold, and platinum. In the subscription, there is, on, there is only silver and platinum and that the library is included in the subscription, okay? And Diane, I see your question about embossing and stamping. Um, let's see what we have time for, all right? Because I see that question. All right, so I see that question. All right, so the next thing that I do want to share with you, and Julie, maybe I can, or maybe Meredith and I can help you offline um, to see what version you have. So we can help you. So just know that I, I'm seeing your question. Um, let's, uh, we're going to take that offline just, I want to make sure that we do get through this, but also I want to answer your question. So don't, do know that I, I see your question. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to come back. So this actually is pretty cool in the MySonet software. I'm going to click finish on my little edit design here. And notice I am already back. I did not have to save an EDO file. I did not have to save anything to or copy or copy stitches or do anything like that to get my uh, digitized design into embroidery. So then I can, you know, make adjustments for for size and I can do add lettering, do all of those different things right here if I choose as well. It's actually pretty darn cool how integrated your MySonet software is. And I don't know how many of you realize how easy it is to move back and forth between the different versions. I think it's really, really, really neat. The pattern itself, the size is set. So there really is not um, a way to change this. If you were to make your own pattern, then you could make a smaller size or a larger size. I will say, I think we're going to have to do this again, everybody. And maybe we can talk about how to make your own fill pattern, that sort of thing. I, I don't think we'll have time today. But basically, that would be the only way, Diane, is to make yourself another uh, fill pattern that's a little bit smaller size because the size remains constant for the fill pattern. All right, so let's go back into digitizing, everybody. Okay, so let's go back into digitizing. And here we go. This time, instead of creating express embroidery, what I am going to do is I'm going to load the background instead of running it through the wizard. Okay, so I'm going to actually start with basically only a background image. So let's let's do this. All right, so let's come here. This is that same pattern, right? So that would that's you know again same pattern or same background. Excuse me. Here we go. Same size, and let me see if I can get this to to help me and actually work this time. Let me try doing it this way for a minute. 
because it kept defaulting back for me. Let's see if now or with click finish. I think it might have held it for me this time. This is my background image, right? Instead of letting and working with these little guys, let's adjust the background, right? So let's adjust the background. It's kind of cool. In the view, we have now a link to our what's called drawn paint. This is this little drawn paint program is actually quite wonderful. Here we go. And here's my design. What I or I keep saying design. I'm sorry. I think you may have uh, worked me too hard, guys. I'm I'm. I guess I feel a little tired today from our last two sessions. I apologize for that. Um, what we're going to do is I just went into paint and what all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete these little handles. See that? So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to delete those two little handles. And then I'm going to get rid of the full background area and... I'm going to get rid of that area as well. Okay, so now I have exactly what I want. Let's come back to our digitizing. And with my image, exactly the way I want it to be, right? So exactly where I want it to be, I am going to go into Quick Create. So this is what I'm talking about. Now I'm actually using the creation tools versus using that express design wizard to take me through, okay? So I'm gonna do a quick stitch plus auto hole and I'm simply going to click right in the middle and click okay and my design is done. But I did a little work on the background first before I clicked inside and actually made this particular file. What I want you to look at is, do you all remember all of those separate little pieces that we had that ran through the Express Design Wizard, right? We had all sorts of little pieces and parts. By using Quick Create, it made the design really in one fast, easy, easier to work with section, right? So there's only one piece over here, making it easier to work with and adjust for what we're gonna do next. So I, I know some of you already said, but basically Express Design Wizard that gives you a final result. Express Design Wizard in digitizing, which is in Platinum, that gives you some ability to change. But now I actually used one of the, the design tools, and that is Quick Create, and allowed me to make, make my design a little bit easier and easier to work with. Okay, so that's really the three ways. It is... Sometimes I will run something through the quick, um, the express design wizard and I, it's just fine. Other times I need to do some adjustments, that sort of thing. So that's where you have to just kind of play around and you get used to the different ways things work. I had to try these guys when I made my little, uh, my little, this little piece, my little uh, table runner here. I had to try a few different things, like how did it work? Is it gonna work this way? So um, you just learn and it's just practice. And I will also tell you that there's no, there are good principles to use when you're digitizing, like we learned when we you know, did this thing, right? So when we did this guy, we learned different principles, but there really isn't, um, a way to, you know, uh, there really isn't a, a one right way. You know, there are different ways to do things, but there are principles behind it. Now, 
Adeline, I know you said, is there a way to save a shape for word sculpt? Um, there is, if again, if you have the, I don't know what version you have. If you have the Platinum software, you can save and make a design in the drawn paint or make an outline image, kind of like I did with the heart. And then you can take that into word sculpt. So there is a way to do that in the Platinum in draw and paint. Okay. All right. So now that I have got this great little heart, let's take a look and let's try some different things because that's the fun thing. This is where I would suggest once you have your design at least pretty much the way you want it to be, go to File, do a Save As, and this is where I truly would you're seeing all my different uh, information. I should have known better. Notice here's that EDO file, right? Here's that EDO file. And it says edit from embroidery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this star heart. And when I call it star heart, that way I can always come back. I can always come back and make adjustments later, but it's always going to remember this is always going to be there. Okay, so it's always going to be there. So I don't like, honestly, I don't like this outline satin stitch. All right, so I don't like the outline satin stitch. What I like, what I really want this to be is I want this to be, I did that wrong. Do you notice I have the color? um bar highlighted over there it was when i right clicked it gave me the information for whatever i had highlighted which in this case was my color what i want to do is i want to highlight the fill and now when i right click i can change this from a satin line to what i want is a triple stitch can change the length that sort of thing and i'm going to click apply you couldn't see that. All right. And Fatima, I have to say, I need to play more too. So <laughs> I think we need to all play more as far as uh, doing our uh, software, right? It's always lots of stuff to play. When I open this, I'm going to hide that background image again, everyone, because what I want you to see is, check this out. I have a hole. I have a hole and I have a hole in my heart, <laughs> but also in my star, right? So also in my star. Let's change that. And that's again, one of the beautiful things. That's just a little bit showing the background, just a little bit there. So I can see how to make this look nicer. So what I will do is I'm clicked on this area. And I think most of you know this, but if you don't, each one of these little nodes can be moved. And it can change the look of your stitches by moving every single one of those little nodes. So one of the great things is, is I can. Now, the other little piece, again, reminder, refresher, or just something new, notice how this um, corner or this node is a square and this one is a little circle. The square itself, you get a square, that means it's going to be a point. And you get that point, see how that's a, a point versus a curve that's over here, right? You get a point by holding the shift key down, so the shift key on your keyboard while you move the node or the point. I'm going to do the same thing over here because I want to close up that little area. I want to close up that, that hole in the heart. But then I want this to look more curved like the rest. So that's why I went ahead and I let my background image show through a little bit. And I can move this around. And everyone, if you ever need to, let's say, I want to put an extra node in here, you can do that, right? You can do that. 
You can add nodes by going to the Home tab, by going to the Home tab, and then you can insert a point there. So now that I've inserted a point, I have more controls in that little area, right? So I have more controls in that little area. If I have too many points, I can always delete a point. So I, a little, I guess I say words of wisdom, a, a little tip, more points is not always necessarily good. Sometimes if you put in too many points or the program puts in too many points, it actually doesn't, uh, it doesn't give a nice curve. It tries to do too much. So please realize that, you know, sometimes curves are where you need more points, but notice there aren't a lot of points in this curve because it doesn't need it. It goes nicely from side to side to from point to point. Think about it as a, uh, oh gosh, I'm now I'm really dating myself, but you know, remember the old coloring books that you did point to point, to, you know, to uh, uh, make your outline for your coloring book. Well, that's kind of what it is. Is you don't always need more points to make uh, make something nice and curved. So. So now I like this better. I like this better because it definitely has, it has that um, straight line or triple stitch outline versus the satin stitch. And I'm now, let's, let's go ahead and change this to a red. So it looks more like a heart. There we go. I'll wake you up a little bit with that red color. Now what I do want to do is I want to right click I am going to go in and I'm going to choose one of the heart patterns. So I'm going to choose a heart pattern. And this one is one of my favorites, everyone. It just happens to be the one I chose. So I already know I like it. So it's a nice big heart. But what I am going to do is I'm going to move that heart pattern so that, check it out, I'm trying to, everything's just a little delayed when I, notice how I put the little downturn in the heart here. I put it right the same place on the pattern. And yes, for those of you who maybe know me a little bit, I am that anal. I like that. Look at that, how it looks. Doesn't that look so cool that the heart pattern and the heart match up? That is like a really big deal for me. So I think that's really, really neat to be able to do that. All right. So at this point, I don't know if there are any questions about this. Some of that was more basic, but this EDO file now we're going to make a bunch of changes with. So we're going to make a bunch of changes with. I've already, so Faith, the, the, Faith asked the question about, can I add a fill to the star? The answer is yes. If you wanted a fill in the star, remember I had taken one away earlier. I can actually do that. What I would most likely need to do is go back into, or actually what I would do is I would go back into that drawn paint and put that color, okay? So put that color um, in the star, and then it would be easy to quick stitch fill. So that's what I would do. You could do points around as well, but yes, you can certainly add a fill to the star. And Meredith, if we can, yep, bring back up on the large screen. So hopefully you guys can see that. I just think it looks so pretty with that fill pattern like that. So I think that's really, really neat. So the next one, while we're still here, Meredith, I'm, I'm going to show you, you know, quick, easy ways to change things. This one is a, a multi-wave fill. All right. So that's a multi-wave fill. And then this one is one of the gradient fills. So we're going to do those two next. All right. So we're going to do those two next. Because again, once you have that EDO file, it's super easy 
to make changes. So it's super easy to make changes. All right. So I hope that I hope you could see that, Kimberly. I hope you could see that better. Now, I, what I would like to do is I made that heart. And this is where, and oh gosh, I forget who asked the question. Diane, you asked the question. This one is where when I made that smaller, I definitely it would have been nice um, to have a smaller fill in there. I'm not going to do that now, but definitely uh, that would have been a nice, nice thing for that. I'm going to completely shut that down or hide my background. And then what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate that heart. So this is our original over here on the left, right? Um, and darling, you could, if you change the color of the fill pattern of the hearts, if you have the star, you, you could do, oh my gosh, that's so great. Darlene just asked about, could I make my, my heart and star? Could we do like a red for the heart? We could do a white satin stitch outline and blue for the star, you bet. So that would be really fun to, uh, to check it out. You know, it would be really fun to try. Um, what I, why I wanted to do this here real quick, just so you could see this heart a little better, is I want to share with you a couple um, different patterns to choose from, right? So different patterns to choose from. So whether it is the, the heart here, instead of a pattern fill, one of the fun things and one of my favorites is this radial fill. So I'm going to click on radial fill. I'm going to take the density down to eight. And everyone, the only reason why I'm taking the density down to eight is because I played around with this and I checked it out. So guess what? I tried 20. It was too far apart. I'm bringing the density closer together. So a smaller number. I'm taking it down to eight. I love this. Isn't that like the coolest thing in the world? At least it is for me. Radial fill is something that I love. And... I like to put that, check out what happens when I put that right there. Isn't that just, to me, that's spectacular. I just think that is so beautiful. And I don't know if you all noticed, but that's actually, you don't have to get close, Meredith, but that was the center of this as well. I love the radial fill for lots of different things, but you can, you can move that around if you didn't like this here. You could certainly move it down like here. That's a whole different look. Or check that out. You could put it in the middle of the um, star area. So these are, this is, once you have that EDO file done, wow. I, you know, Ruth, you went, wow, to me, this is a wow. I think it is really, really neat. So I'm going to kind of leave this one like this. We're going to box select. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, though because I'm just going to show you all the different ones or different ways to play around. So I'm going to go back to the beginning or the very first one. Let's do another duplicate or duplicate. And what I would like to show you now is actually the gradient fills. Um, I think I used to, I, I know people used to use gradient fills more. Um, I think they're just beautiful. What the program does. So let's check this out. I'm going to right click. Down here where it says gradient, okay? So where it says gradient, what we want to do is we're going to take it, put a check right here, okay? And... Remember, we've got that apply button. Um, there are two ways to do gradients. One is with one color. And so just so you can kind of see single color gradient. Uh, let me make it super obvious here. This is a density of, of two, which is right what it is right up here. This is a density of eight. Let's take that density to 20. 
All right, so let's take that density to 20. See how that just changed and when I apply again? So what's happening is the there's a lot of stitches up here and there's very few stitches down here at the bottom. Can you kind of, I think you can kind of see that. You also have a little marker here. And let me apply. See what happened. I, I actually moved the marker so it's going to show you more or less amount of stitches depending upon where you are. What I, this, in a class like this, I will tell you this, this is the fun part. And I will also say guys that I don't have, I mean, this is where you just have to play. You can try your gradient, your, you know, single color gradient. You can try this at 30. You can move this guy around to see what happens. You just end up start playing and seeing what's going on, which I think is interesting. But for me, the more important one is this multicolor gradient. Okay, multicolor gradient. I want to start with a super light pink color here. And we're going to end with a super dark red color, even a burgundy color there. All right. And I'm going to move this guy right to the middle. And when I apply, you can see I've got pink up here and it comes down to here and I've got the dark red down here. So you're, you're stitching color over color. So this really is two colors. I, I think that is beautiful. Have you all played with that before? I think this is just a beautiful way to mess around with this. But... I feel like, but wait, there's more because you can actually add more markers, which will add more colors. So I've got this marker. I'm going to click that to be red and now apply. And now look at how now we have three colors to mess around with and change things around and move so I can move that as well. Look at how, I just think that's beautiful. I don't know about you. I just love how the gradient fill works. Who here has played with gradient fills? Anyone? I'm, I, I know some of you probably have. But it's been a while since I, I just love how this looks. I think it is really, really wonderful. And Darlene, to your comment of the fill patterns, some of you, yes, some of you, no. Um, but think about the fill, fill pattern. You could actually do, we could do this really quick. We could do like a, a red, white, and blue right on this if we wanted to. So I could do red. I could do blue. And so if we did that, we would have our heart as red, white, and blue. But it's like, oh, man, isn't that neat? So um, I, I see a lot of you have. Some of you have not. Some of you, um, you've tried it, but it really hasn't changed. You really just need to sit there with this open and say, what colors do I want to use? Do I want, you know, do I move that? Is that too much? You just have to play. You really do just have to play around, see what you like, what you don't like, that sort of thing. And um, Leona, you asked, yes, I am actually, not today, but as I go along, I will save each heart. Yes, I sure will. Um, because I will say this is just my, you know, my basic heart. I'll save a radial heart. I'll save a gradient heart. So um, I think that is is really uh, key, is to save as you go. Definitely save as you go. I really liked, uh, I like the red, white, and blue. That's really cool. So I am going to make this a little smaller. Just one more little little thing for you. When I did the, um, when I did this piece, um, if you look, I know uh, 
you'll notice that I have the dark at the bottom of both, but I flip one upside down, which if I duplicate this guy and I do a flip, right? Look at what happens. It actually, the start and the stop. Notice what happened here is my, um, is actually the blue stayed at the bottom, which makes sense because that's how it's set up. So to be able to have the blue at the top, if I want that to happen, I do need to come in here and actually change around my colors. I need to make this color the blue and this color the white. So just realize that was not wrong. That's how the program works. But to get those colors to do that, you just have to check it out. Carol said, try three layers of colors with radio fill, different densities. I mean, oh my gosh, this is why I agree with you. And <laughs> Debbie's a play day. I, I know I get in this little rabbit hole. Um, it is actually very interesting. Um, but I think, again, everybody, it is um, just working with playing a little bit more. The last one that I did, and I, it won't take me but a moment, so I am going to do this. I know we're at time here, everybody. I know we're at time. I'm just going to duplicate one more. The last little heart that I did is all I did actually was I came in here and I got rid of the pattern fill. I said no fill, right? Oh, and change applique. We have, I mean, there's so, so much you can do. So what with this little guy, guess what? It's just basically, there it is. I just did a triple stitch and I squished it up and I made it bigger and smaller and did all sorts of things with it, right? But that's just a triple stitch. I think that's why I love, and Meredith, I think we can come back here if you would for just a moment. Um, I think that's why I love the digitizing is it may make, I may take the time to do that first heart and make sure it looks great and make sure it works really well. But once I have that, then I have, again, every, every one of these, right? Those all came from the first heart. So it is playing. It is trying some different stuff. And Leona, it is. I did save each one of these as I went along to make sure that I had it. Now, could I go back with that, um, you know, EDO file at the beginning? Could I go back and do that? Do it again, I guess I should say, yes, you bet. But it is easier. Once you like one, save it, right? Once you like one and, and go ahead and save it. So, um, guys... I, I've been trying to follow the comments. I think got some good, hopefully some good information for you in there. Um, just a couple reminders. So a couple reminders. First of all, the biggest reminder is thank you all. Thank you all for coming to this three days and hanging out and just having some fun. I didn't get a chance to uh, talk about the uh, stamping, but guess what? That's a great one that we'll write down and and be able to hopefully do something to help you in the future, right? So keep an eye out. I, we didn't forget about it. It's just the timing was a little bit tough for, for different things like this. Um, don't forget about the, uh, oh gosh, let me, I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly here. The uh, created design in the MySonet software, right? So Definitely don't forget that we've got that contest going on. That is something that I think is really important. Um, it'll be fun for you to try different things, maybe things that you even learned here. So we want to make sure that Meredith just put that back up again. Um, our next Facebook Live is October 12th, and that is with Mickey Hus Hudson for the MySonet. So certainly... Um, try and, uh, you know, try and come back because we're always doing these different things. So that's really great. And Meredith is also, Carol, we look in the chat. There were um, 
There's a little information about a contest coming up. We'll have it on the MySonet. So take a look in there, Carol, um, about the, the, all the information about the contest is there. And Julie, it is at two o'clock central time on the 12th is the next one. So two o'clock central time on the 12th. Thanks for uh, reminding me about that. And lastly, we are going to put up a little survey and with that little survey, really just kind of to some of your questions that you had, you know, what do we want to do next, right? What are the things that you need help with? What did you like? Did you like the three-day format? Did you, you know, do you prefer having it spread out a little bit? All that sort of stuff. So um, just if you would take the time, Meredith just put up that uh that survey. So please, if you, if you can, it's only, I think five questions. So if you can take the time to fill that out, because we'd like to, uh, we like to hear from you and we would like to try to uh, do what you guys do, what you guys need. So um, again, thanks again. It was great to be here. And uh, until the next time, everybody have a great time with your MySonet software. Bye.